Next curve. Hi everyone, this is Leonard Lee, Executive Analyst at Next Curve, and welcome to this episode of the Rethink Podcast. And we are taping live here from Berlin, Germany. And uh, why are we in Germany? It's because of Lenovo Innovation World 2024. And, um, you know, we just happen to be in Berlin. So it's also about IFA 2024, but we're not going to talk about that. For this podcast, we're going to be focusing on the Lenovo event. And I have a good friend here, uh, Prakash Sangam of Tantra Analyst. You all know him, right? He's been on the show several times, and uh, I've been on his several times as well. So he attended uh, Lenovo's Innovation World 2024, and we're going to share some of our takes. Absolutely. Takes from the event, which took place this week, just before uh, IFA 2024. So it was a pre-event event. So there were a lot of announcements as well as... Um, you know, briefings, analyst briefings that we were privy to prior to uh, many of these announcements going um, official and public. But um, anyways, we can share some of our takes now. So hopefully you'll stick around and uh, partake in some of the sharing here. So before we get started, remember to like, subscribe to the uh, Next Curve YouTube podcast, as well as our research portal at www.next-curve.com. And also follow Prakash Sangam on uh, LinkedIn. He also has a website at where he has a research portal, and it is at www.tantraanalyst.com. And um, he has a podcast also, and it is called Tantra's Mantra. Mantra. Yeah. So, hey, uh, good to be here with you in Berlin. Glad to be here. Yeah. How, how are you enjoying it? Berlin is an excellent city. It's kind of my new favorite city, if you will. Really? Really loved it. Wow. You know, we walk quite a lot. Oh, yeah. Very long. I Ali is in a very green, very clean city. Yeah. No crowds. People are chill, very friendly. Love it. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, they have some pretty good food, too. Right? Yeah, absolutely. I didn't That's expect it. to get... I'm a vegetarian slash vegan, so I actually packed my food because I was not so sure I'll get anything here. But surprise, surprise, actually, I found it better than any event I've attended in the U.S. So, yeah, that's that. Yeah, so... um this week, we had the uh, pleasure of attending, as I said, uh, Lenovo's Innovation World 2024, which included a demo day, mm -hmm. right? There was a demo day where we got to touch and feel the new products, as well as get a, a briefing on some of the new services and capabilities that Lenovo's launching uh, going forward in, you know, in through, I would say, EPO 2024, right? Uh, and also, you know, this particular event, IFA as well as uh, Lenovo's Innovation World 2024 uh, are particularly important, I think, uh, this year simply because of what's going on with the AIPC, right? And in particular, the new silicon that's coming out from Intel, Qualcomm, and AMD, right? And so this was a really big event for all three chip firms that were introducing either their first Copilot plus EC grade or certified or qualifying yeah. AIPCs or extending their portfolio. And so we'll talk about that in a moment. But, you know, quite honestly, uh, yeah, AIPCs have been around for quite some time. I mean, uh, technically, you might say that any, any PC with the GPU is a a high pc right i mean theoretically right yeah. but um you know there was a there were a lot of announcements it was actually quite overwhelming yeah indeed a uh, lot of new products that are coming out and but then also not just typically you know the typical okay intel and then amd uh units that are coming out now we have qualcomm in the game right coming yeah. into ifa 2024 and so what were some of your takes yeah, I think the event was, uh, Lenovo World event was very nice. And you know, with the pre-briefing, I think it was very informative. 
it's not just you know getting the marketing messaging as an analyst you want to talk to the product managers yeah. try to understand strategy and uh-huh. all and we got that you know yeah. thanks uh, you know for that and thanks uh, our good friend scott uh, yeah. amras uh, for that and then uh, the event was of course extravagant yeah. <laughs> very bright very <laughs> loud <laughs> yeah uh, very loud and colorful so very industrial and, yeah yeah it was in a in a yeah. you know um yeah old uh, power uh, yeah, power, plant, power yeah. plant and so on so or i mean i think it was a great event and then i think more importantly so many devices announced as you mentioned yeah now as you all know the whole copilot plus pc era yeah. uh, started with uh, qualcomm with their x elite and x plus there are on 20 models already more than 20 models already in the market some of them tested i tested one uh, um, yoga slim 7x and uh, you know others i'm still working on and then great battery life they they kind of set the bar on two things one is you know great battery life right although we've been talking about but they kind of said this is th- this is what will be standard now to be a major player you have to basically either meet or you know exceed it one and second more of a microsoft uh, bar which is for anything to be called copilot plus pcs and to get all those features now and in the future it the pc has to have at least 40 tops ai uh, you know ai uh, npu tops and uh, you know all that intel and amd announced have those all these laptops they announce have those so we ra- right now have you know uh, all three uh, pcs with all three chipsets from almost all pc oems i would say you know pcms that matter so it's a huge portfolio for each of the oems as well how we position them how they uh, message them i think it's going to be key we'll yeah. talk a little bit more about what we heard from leno on that front sure and uh you know so let me break down the new models that were introduced um actually you know we'll do that i'll just do that really quickly right now and then we'll provide links to the actual um press you know, specs and the yeah. press releases yes on the consumer side okay they introduced the all new uh-huh. lenovo yoga slim 7i yeah aura edition <laughs> yeah it's a 15 inch uh version of the yoga uh, slim 7x that uh, you yeah. know we've uh, had the pleasure of testing out yeah it, it's basically going to be one of the two intel uh core ultra processor powered uh pcs that uh lenovo is going to uh, be bringing to market okay so this is a really important deal uh, for intel right um, lenovo is introducing the thinkpad x1 carbon Gen 13 Aura Edition, okay, and so this is like the workhorse of enterprise across the globe, right? And yeah. now it is the second generation of the AI PC uh, in this line. Lenovo really positioned this particular model as their spearhead into enterprise with Copilot Plus uh, PC, and then okay, so those that's two for from Intel. Then on um the AMD side and <laughs> they have quite a few yeah. uh models that uh, they introduce. So number one, the Lenovo Yoga Pro 7 which is a 14 inch uh, laptop, uh Lenovo Idea Pad Slim 5 which is a 15 inch laptop and a Lenovo Idea Pad Slim 5 13 inch. And these are both powered by AMD's Ryzen uh AI 300 processors, right? And then on the enterprise side, they have a ThinkPad T14s Gen 6 and a ThinkBook 16 Gen 7 Plus. So that's a lot of a lot of models. Yeah, yeah from AMD. Mm-hmm. And then if we kick on over to to Snapdragon or Qualcomm Snapdragon X series where they introduced a new SKU, the 8 core uh, SKU of the X yeah. Plus. Yeah. 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 Which yeah. is the mid tier, I think. they said the they are they're uh, targeting you know pcs at the price range from 600 to 800 with That's this specific 799 well yeah. you, you know the 99 yeah, yeah. is for yeah. people on yeah. price so 799 to start yeah right yeah and so um 
with the Snapdragon X Plus 8 core processor, and this is really the, you know, the new models that came out from Lenovo. Yeah. You have a Lenovo IdeaPad Slim 5X, which is a 14-inch laptop, and a Lenovo IdeaPad 5X 2-in-1. And for enterprise, Lenovo announced their ThinkBook 16 Gen 7 powered by Snapdragon X Plus 8 core. Yeah, um, yeah, quite a few. I mean, uh, it's great that you remembered all of them. <laughs> I, I would run it's like going into a candy store and trying to find out how many different types of candies are out there. So yeah, yeah. all look the same and all look, all look good, but you have to differentiate, right? So I think one uh, and a couple of key points uh, with, with these three SOCs coming in. One, you know, thanks to Qualcomm with Accelerate, battery life and uh, power efficiency is center of the universe again and second well ai I, ai you have to have it uh, of course yeah. most of the workloads now don't use npu but you have to have a npu because microsoft wants it because that's where everybody thinks the you know uh, evolution will be and although they are called these are called ai pcs or copilot plus pcs but in the short term performance between them will be decided based on uh, the battery life and how they run current workloads with yeah. their uh, with you know with these processors right so and then as we move forward as applications move to npu and new applications come in that will uh, utilize npu better maybe then we'll look at that but right now battery life i think is the decision factor you know battery life in terms of power consumed per watt right yeah. or the performance per watt we're developing to the MPU is a nascent thing, right? Yeah. And um, we are seeing some of that happen happening. And so like at Mobile World Congress, I mean, uh, if you've been following my coverage there, you know, one of the things that I, I told the Qualcomm folks is, hey, this magic mask thing is pretty cool. And that's likely that, you know, the MPU is going to provide some utility for application features. It may not necessarily be the application itself, but there's a, you know, when you look at the totality of an application Correct, yeah. for a particular Specific process or function, and, yeah. that it will provide a feature that supports that function that can capitalize on the MPU. That uh, that will do it better than the CPU, CPU and absolutely. the GPU, right? Absolutely. I mean, of course, there'll be new applications and services yeah. that you use the NPU. But not only that, even if you take the existing enterprise applications like security, yeah. right? I mean, any uh, enterprise PC, uh, you know, without uh, when you when it is just brand new machine runs fine, looks great. The moment you load the corporate image, the, the yeah. speed comes down and battery life comes down. Yeah, mainly because lots of security and device management and other yeah. applications are continuously running draining the yeah. battery they're running keep, keeping the cpu alive all the time you know and draining the efficiency yeah. with npu many of those could be ported on to npu and run at much more efficiently than they are today yeah. that itself can increase the you know battery life if well designed yeah. well you know increase the efficiency at yeah. least then you know, yeah. utilize the npu yeah, and then, you know, like you said, from the security perspective, from the device management perspective, these agents that are running in the background can be more active, right? right and yeah. You don't have to worry about yeah. the you know, the hit on power exactly. as much. And so these things can be more persistent, available, and then protect, let's say, for instance, with security, it's protecting. Uh, yeah, and right now. Yeah. It's not a choice. They have to run 24-7 or yeah. whenever the PC is on, which means that is hitting CPU all the yeah. time and then, you know, not running efficiently even for very minor. I mean, they are not uh, process processor yeah. incent intensive, yeah. but they have to be running, which keeps the CPU alive all the time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 One good thing to uh, many of these PCs now has with the taskbar is you can actually see the NPU utilization. Yeah, right, yeah. which was not before. Yeah. So anybody who is technically more inclined, when you buy these PCs, you know, when you run applications, look at the NP utilization. That could tell you, you know, how much the app is modernized, for yeah. example. Yeah. Yeah. And then so, you know, that's that's 
Qualcomm, and they introduced, like we said, introduced the um, X plus A core. Yeah. And again, the uh, objective of that is really to expand the the market, um, not only for Qualcomm but yeah. for Microsoft, and then obviously, oh yeah, for like Lenovo, right? Yeah. yeah. Providing, uh, you know. A, a lower price point, uh, enabling lower pro price point and devices, and then being able to all tiers and bring AI it. to all tiers, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. So that's one point that all these SOCs from all the vendors have been, of course, they are tiered, right? But the AI capability is exactly same in all the tiers. Yeah. So the, the point is, at least right now, they are not tiering these devices and the SOCs based on AI capability. They want to have top of the class AI cap capability for all of them. I mean, that shows, I mean, obviously, you know, there is a good reason behind it. When new applications come in, they don't want, you know, they want very wide adoption, which yeah. helps Microsoft and all the OEMs and the SOC players. And also they don't want anybody to be handicapped from using these applications because of a uh, inferior NPU. Yeah. yeah. In addition, if you have to run these lot of uh, applications which run all the time like security, then you know for all of these devices, they can be just moved on mm. to NPU. Yeah. I think the real big announcement was um, the launch of Lunar Lake. Mm -hmm. And now what Intel likes to call it now is Core Ultra 200 v okay so that's what we're all gonna have to call uh, and it some, okay, we're, uh, and sometimes really it is high yeah. and sometimes they also referred it to uh, as score ultra uh series, series two. two yeah, yeah. Which would make Meteor Lake Series One, right? Yeah. But you know, again, that's not the official designation, so we'll we'll stick with 200 V. Yeah. I covered this extensively uh, for, but you know, better part of this year, starting with uh, CES earlier this year, where I had a chance to check out an early demo of Lunar Lake. But especially with um, uh, Computex and uh, attending. Intel's uh, tech world in Taipei. That's where we got a lot of detail from Intel on this new processor, or at least the affirmation uh, of a lot of the, let's call it expectations that they were set setting, uh, which uh, suggest a very performant processor, okay? Energy efficiency is something that they claim that they have nailed. And it seems that Lenovo is pretty, uh, pretty I would say, happy well, what they've seen with the processor, the Lunar Lake is basically sporting about 120 total, let's say, AI compute tops. But on the MPU side, about 48. And obviously, um, you were, you we're kind of splitting hairs at, you know, with the MPU, right? And yeah. there's still a question as to, uh, well, what are you really going to do with this thing? Although there is some suggestions. Uh, and I think Qualcomm's done a good job of suggesting what are some of the features and functions that uh, could leverage yeah. a, a MPU in a differentiated way. But all this is still evolving, right? Uh, exactly. So, I mean, 40, 48, 50, there'll be a big difference. I, initially, I don't think there'll be a huge difference. As yeah. the AI workloads ramp up, maybe we'll see some difference between the 40 and the 50, right? So, yeah. I mean, we will see how far that goes. So from an OEM perspective, with these many offerings, it is quite a challenge because now they are forced to support all of them and have very wide portfolio. I think uh, yeah. it makes OEM's job difficult because yeah. but there is an opportunity, so they are investing in it and have developers as well, right, to some extent. So going back to Lunar Lake really quickly, you know, the some of the additional anticipation coming with it was really on the enterprise side. Mm -hmm. So as we mentioned earlier, there was some, especially with the uh, ThinkPad X1 Carbon, they're really positioning that particular model to be Lord that spearhead yeah. for enterprise. And yeah. that a lot of that is basically founded on Intel's deep you know, uh, legacy and mm -hmm. uh, and footprint in enterprise, right? And and family, that you uh, really can't ignore. Yeah, familiarity right? of CIOs, so, IT managers with uh, using yeah. ThinkPad and with Intel yeah. Yeah. for so long, right? And uh, I mean, I agree with you that 
you know, we'll see how the benchmarks come in, how the actual use case uh, for specific use cases, the battle life lasts for yeah. these new devices. Yeah. But uh, based on how confident uh, we, uh, Lenovo was, and you know, other yeah. OEMs who, who have announced devices, PCs based on yeah. Lunar Lake, yeah, yeah. Uh, looks like they are happy with it. I mean, you know, yeah, you I mean, expect um, them to test quite a lot yeah, lab we'll, in we'll actual scenarios. We'll have to see, you know, we'll see. units get in the hands of um, yeah. you know testers Correct. and uh, folks that benchmark these devices, and we'll we'll know. Before exactly they start, and, and uh, from the user's perspective, you know, people using and and finding how long the battery life is. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah. benchmarks is one, but when you're actually right, using right. it on a specific use case, whether the battery right. life claims last, I don't. But yeah, it, I mean, it, it's important to to note that uh, I mean, the Lunar Lake, okay, or Core Ultra two hundred V is uh, one of the oh, actually. It's one of two families of processors that uses TSMC's mm -hmm. uh, three nanometer. Nobody yeah. else does it, right? Yeah. Only Apple. So, you know, they're coming in at, uh, as let's call it leading edge, mm -hmm. not quite the leading edge, but they're, they're a level above everyone else in terms of the process technology that they're using. And, and so there's a lot of benefits that they should be able to uh, get out of that decision, that that um, decision to go with that technology. Uh, but all, obviously, a lot of uh, anticipation, but also a lot of uh, now questions um, as to does Lunar Lake and the core Ultra 200 V series deliver. And so we'll find out soon. And we can't forget AMD. AMD was part of the party okay yeah, yeah and lenovo showcased their first batch of ryzen ai 300 series laptops mm -hmm. and so you know one of the things that kind of puts amd ahead of the rest is you know the, that dubious mpu compute right tops count right yeah, they, yeah. They claim 50, 50, 50 yeah, but yeah. that's like, you yeah. know, yeah. it's, um, you know, FPGA based versus yeah. you know, DSP, yeah. right? But yeah. don't tell Qualcomm that. Don't tell him it's a DSP. <laughs> it's an MPU, folks. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, so uh, but I think more important than that for AMD, I think they, among these three, they had the widest uh, offerings <laughs> on, on, on Lenovo, yeah. right? I mean, rather say, you know, Lenovo had widest, lot, widest lot, offering yeah. on AMD. And it's targeting that yeah. crucial with their idea pad and two in ones. Yeah. And so they're going after the, yeah. the mid tier, you know, upper yeah. mid tier and also different use yeah. cases to, uh, with the two in one. Right. So yeah, that's, that's interesting. So Emily Hutchin, a CFO, yeah. she said that we have over, um, 50 models and we can't forget that you know when it comes to ai pcs meteor lake is still a, yeah. a ai pc and actually so are the previous generation ryzen uh processors even though you know they they're clocking in around you yeah. know 10 or 11 uh mpu yeah, top yeah, or yeah. ai engine tops yeah right? yeah, so, yeah, tops. yeah it's it's interesting how each of these are positioning themselves Yep. And and oems i think frankly they're basically saying we'll support all of them you choice to or or customers and we let customers choose right so yeah yeah it's like hey look more competition it's uh, always be good for us and yeah. uh, it's a different dynamic now yeah, yeah. And, and, and 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 uh frankly much wider bandwidth the, the more uh different types of modules uh, models will be beneficial to a market leader like uh, lenovo because of this scope right yeah so you have to invest of course more if you have yeah. You know, you have to support three different SOCs, different uh, SKUs, and so yeah. on. Yeah. So the more R and D dollars, but if you can amortize them on a much wider scale, so the, your expense, additional expense per module, per yeah. device or per model, will be much lower if you have a much larger scale. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, you know, Lenovo could use that as a yeah. differentiation, if you will, against sure. competition. Sure. Um, but at the end of the day, it's it's the a customer's choice, yeah, right? Exactly. What yeah, the customer yeah. wants. Yeah. So, yeah. And uh, one of the other interesting things that, okay, so there's the Aura. Exactly. Yeah. Aura edition, which yeah. is specific for Intel. 
right and lenovo so it's basically a, yeah it, it's a, as they said it's a lenovo intel exclusive yep. which comes with set of uh, you know additional features yeah and you know uh, capabilities to some yeah. extent they call them smart modes and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll is what, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> The boards, yeah. you know, some of them are interesting, some of them are benign, which still be useful. But I think yeah. the most interesting one was you take a phone, tap it to into your uh, laptop, yeah, and then boom, smart chip, very quickly, yeah, yeah very quickly, yeah. you know, without. I think it got really, really fast. So yeah. probably, and I was really amazed how fast that is. Oh yeah, just to, uh, you know, you know, just uh, touch it. Then the device, the, all the pictures will move to your uh, laptop. Yeah, and you can move back and forth with it. Uh, which I think is interesting, which that I think builds on a, not I think it is for surely, builds on an Intel feature which was called Unison. Yeah. So they work together to take it to the next level. Yeah. And now it's um, uh, exclusive Intel and Lenovo yeah. feature. And yeah. And, and, and it also had a smart uh, support. Smart, smart. Oh, smart. 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 Right. Yeah. Smart, smart. Yeah. I forgot the exact name. That smart care. Smart care. care. That thing. Yeah. That's also key as well, which is yeah. part of the aura offering. Yeah, and um, you know, and a lot of that in the spirit of accelerating the adoption of um, the uh, core ultra um, processors, or you know, uh, laptops or devices that are powered by uh, the core ultra two hundred V. Yeah. Uh, into the enterprise, right? And again, this is this is Intel's first um, batch of Copilot, Copilot Plus PC, PC offering offerings from so, Lenovo, and yeah. obviously we're going to see yeah. uh, the other OEMs uh, coming to market and announcing and coming to market yeah. with their own offerings. So this is a big deal for Intel. Mm -hmm. uh, it's probably a really big deal for the OEMs who are really looking for you know, to crash that that enterprise gate, especially as they're looking at, you know, the quote unquote AIPC opportunity, but then also, you know, the setting of support. Yeah. yeah. Windows L1. So, right. well, so. so I think it's kind of, uh, it could be a perfect storm. We'll see how that turns out. Yeah. I mean, if, uh, but, you know, oper if enterprises are looking to upgrade yeah. 11 itself and then the next upgrade cycle, yeah. you know, and now there is enough offering across the board that they, would, they don't have to think twice before adopting. Yeah. They still have to think on which <laughs> SOC and which model they choose yeah. for yeah. Copilot Plus PC. But yeah. one thing is, it'd be much easier for them to move on to this next generation of PCs along with Windows 11 whenever they want they yeah. to do the upgrade. Yeah, and obviously, you know, Lenovo has a deep, you know, Deep legacy, as we mentioned before, enterprise. Enterprise, and, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then the smart care would come in very handy in supporting and you know shepherding uh, enterprises to move into this next generation of PCs and next version of Windows 11 or Windows World. Uh, yeah, like. yeah, yeah. And then AI PC fast start. You know, it's interesting. Yeah. Um, you know, businesses. I, I think it's pretty well known now businesses have been slow to adopt uh, you know ai uh, despite yeah. what some early surveys last year suggested <laughs> right it's yeah. like no that hasn't turned out but that's one of the th uh, strategies and programs that uh, lenovo is putting in place yeah. to basically help enterprises understand well what is that value that you can get out of an ai pc and then you know beyond that you know okay. yeah. if you have a, a copilot plus pc qualifying a device how to get additional value out of that but um yeah so the the uh, creator zone that they announced yeah the, the on the yeah consumer yeah side. so on the yeah. consumer side is i think uh, a good initiative as well I that it works for yeah, enterprise, too. enterprise too so basically what it is is they are taking the models in this specific case uh, stable stabi um, stability AI. They're partnering with stability AI. Stability AI, AI to get uh, yeah, the stable, stable fusion, model. fusion model. So they have quantized it so that it runs on on device. Um, it, it still needs a connection yeah. for for um, internet connection mm -hmm. uh, to make sure it for uh, for uh, uh, I know the content is not. Uh, 
questionable content to do security check it still needs internet connection but the model itself completely runs on the device mm -hmm. so it's for you know primarily text to image creation and that sorts right, of right. things the whole idea is basically making sure you provide you know op applications and use cases and uses for users to use the yeah. npu that is on the device right i think that's yeah. a, that's an interesting and neat way to enable uh, yeah. users to use it i mean if you're using uh, stable diffusion on cloud you have to pay you have to either have a subscription yeah. or uh, you yeah. know run tokens and so on here it's all free of cost to you because it's all running on the device yeah yeah exactly yeah. and yeah. so uh, i think that's a good good approach and you know they're not going off and training their own models or Correct. trying to create their own yeah. you know lenovo llm or diffusion model yeah. you know they're really trying to partner again with the likes of um, stability ai and uh being able to create these new capabilities locally that support a, a, a lenovo branded experience and mm -hmm. so uh it's an interesting strategy and it, it's one that i mean i think lenovo feels they need to do in order to differentiate especially in quote unquote ai right and accelerate the adoption you know that's basically everybody's trying yeah. to do yeah and you already have the capability on the device on the device that you own yeah why not look at opportunity to use it right yeah and um uh, you know these guys uh, I, i'm telling you they, they they like to explore they like to to experiment and uh and, and not just you know across a lot of fronts and so it, it's going to be interesting to see how their strategy as we've heard it seen it evolves and then uh, expresses itself through execution but uh wow you know we're trying to get through as much as we can in a short period of time because we don't want to make this into a two-hour piece yes, we yes. probably forgot some stuff yeah. but you know what we'll we'll make some notes in the comment section or in the posts that we yeah. uh, make of this particular podcast but uh hey prakash it's so <laughs> good to hang out with you yeah same especially perfect. like the the sightseeing and yeah, so walking around, right? yeah yeah walking. just a hint on the ifa stuff yeah we we saw ifa in a day yeah really maybe it's because we're so pro yeah. that you know it doesn't take us long anymore you know we just, just walk through and yeah. walk the whatever eight or nine miles of <laughs> ifa yeah. and you know see everything that we need to see and uh walk out with the impressions that we need but um yeah that's going to be another exciting discussion and we'll we'll uh recap everything next week so stay tuned for that but remember to like share and also subscribe to the next curve rethink podcast and then follow our research at www.next-curve.com and uh you know uh prakash why don't you take an opportunity to share with our uh audience here how they can contact you and uh partake in tantra analyst yeah, sure. First of all, uh, thank you very, yeah. first of all, thank you very much for uh, for the opportunity to speak. I mean, I really enjoyed uh, being in the event as well as uh, yeah. in this uh, podcast. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, you can find uh, all of my research on uh, my site www.tantraanalyst.com uh, or on my uh, uh, follow me on my Twitter, my tech musings again, my tech musings, or on LinkedIn. And also have a podcast. Uh, it's called Tantra's Mantra, which you can find on my website as well. Would yeah, I show up a lot. Them. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and we talk about really cool stuff, so yeah. you want to make sure that you listen in. So, yeah. with that, hey, um, let's have a safe trip back home. We're on the safe yeah, flight, yeah, yeah. way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, we'll see you next time. All right, take care, right. everyone.